Hi everyone. Last week in part 1, we solved polynomial congruences of higher degree using Fermat's little theorem. In today's lecture, we are going to solve polynomial congruences of higher degree using the method of factorization. So, let us see how we solve such questions. What if we are asked to solve x square minus 9 is congruent to 0 mod of 7? Now, look at the left hand side. It can be easily factorized and we can write x square minus 9 as x minus 3 and x plus 3. So, the Congruence becomes x minus 3 into x plus 3 is congruent to 0 mod of 7. If you equate the left hand side, each factor, in fact, to 0, you will get x is equal to 3 and you will get x is equal to minus 3. So, your congruent solutions are x is congruent to 3 mod of 7 and x is congruent to minus 3 mod of 7. Now, if you want, you can always replace minus 3 by its residue mod 7. That is, you can replace it by 4. So, alternatively, we have the solution as x is congruent to 3 mod 7 and x is congruent to 4 mod of 7. You can also write the general solution as x is equal to 3 plus 70 and x is equal to minus 3 plus 70 where t takes all the values 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 etc. Let's solve another question. What if we are asked to solve x cube minus 7x plus 6 is congruent to 0 mod of 13? Now, if we factorize the left hand side, we will get x minus 1, x minus 2 and x plus 3. So this will become, this is congruent to 0 mod of 13. Now if I equate each factor to 0, we will get three solutions x is equal to 1 x is equal to 2 and x is equal to minus 3 so my solutions become x is congruent to 1 mod of 13 x is congruent to 2 mod of 13 and x is congruent to minus 3 mod of 13 we can always write the general solution as x is equal to 1 plus 13 t x is equal to 2 plus 13 t and x is equal to minus 3 plus 13 t now, how did we factorize this? You were, must be wondering how we got the three factors. So, what we do is, here you see that we have the terms x cubed minus 7x plus 6. So, I added and subtracted x square and x to the left hand side. So, if we add x square, we subtract x square, we add x and we subtract x. Now, just rearrange the terms. So, I am taking minus x square with x cube and with this x square, I am taking the minus x and with this minus 7x plus x becomes minus 6x. With that, I take this 6. So, if I take x square common from here, we get x square, x minus 1. From here, I take x common, I get x into x minus 1 and from this, I take minus 6 common, so I get minus 6 into x minus 1. Now, pull out the x minus 1, so we will get x minus 1 into x square plus x minus 6, which is congruent to 0 mod 13. You can further factorize this quadratic, which is easy to do, as x minus 2 and x plus 3. So, this is how we got the three factors. Let's do another example. What if we are asked to solve the congruence x to the power 27 minus 3 x to the power 13 minus 2 is congruent to 0 mod of 13. Now, our modulus is prime and powers of x are greater than the modulus. So, we can safely use a Fermat's little theorem. From Fermat's little theorem, we know x to the power 12 will be congruent to 1 mod of 13. So, let's look at the first term, x to the power 27. Now, that we can write as a product of x to the power 24 into x to the power 3. And as x to the power 24 will be congruent to 1. Because if we raise x to the power 12 is congruent to 1 mod 13, 
to 2 on both the sides, we will get this is congruent to 1. So, we are left with x to the power 27 is congruent to x cube mod 13. And x to the power 13 can be written as x into x to the power 12. As this is congruent to 1, so we get x to the power 13 is congruent to x mod 13. Let's replace x to the power 27 and x to the power 13 by their respective residues. So we will get x to the power 27 can be replaced by x to the power 3 from here and x to the power 13 can be replaced by x. So we get x cube minus 3x minus 2 is congruent to 0 mod 13. On factorizing the left hand side, we get x plus 1 whole square into x minus 2 is congruent to 0 mod 13. Now we will get the answer directly. x is congruent to minus 1 mod 13 and x is congruent to 2 mod 13. Let's look at another example where my modulus is not prime. So, we are asked to solve x square plus x minus 2 is congruent to 0 mod of 15. And we will be using the method of factorization here also. So, let us write this congruence as a system of congruence. So, we will get x square plus x minus 2 is congruent to 0 mod 13 as x square plus x minus 2 is congruent to 0 mod 3 and x square plus x minus 2 is congruent to 0 mod of 5. We have split this 15 into two factors 3 and 5. Now the first congruence x square plus x minus 2 is congruent to 0 mod of 3 on factorization reduces to x minus 1 into x plus 2 is congruent to 0 mod 3 and the second congruence x square plus x minus 2 is congruent to 0 mod 5 reduces to x minus 1 x plus 2 is congruent to 0 mod of 5. Now the first one gives me the solution x is congruent to 1 mod 3 we get from here and x is congruent to minus 2 mod of 3 and the second one gives us x is congruent to 1 mod 5 and x is congruent to minus 2 mod 5. Now you can use Chinese remainder theorem and that will give us two solutions x is congruent to 1 mod 15 and x is congruent to minus 2 mod of 15. If you want to write it as a general solution, you can write it as x is equal to 1 plus 15t and x is equal to minus 2 plus 15t. If you have a doubt, you can always take some particular value of t and substitute in your original congruence. You will see that the congruence is satisfied. So this was all about a part 2. In part 3, we will use Hensel's method for solving higher degree congruence. And thanks a lot for watching.